This is Total Warhead, and today I want to do a building guide for Troy. And it will touch upon different kinds of buildings, where to build them, and it will be related to mythical, to uh, resources, to temples, every single aspect of the game. Let's get started. The first unit uh, building type that we want to talk about is mythical unit buildings. Unless the unit you are recruiting is a siren unit only build the mythical unit buildings on major settlements in the game the reason for that is that there's a faction limit of how much you can wield each of the mythical units that are building based and that limit is 12 except for warriors of artemis now what i'm getting at here is to get the max cap of faction limit 12 you must get all the major settlements where those unit that's respective unit can be recruited in order to get to the max faction limit and if you get to the max faction limit with getting this to tier 5 then you can get it for the lower tiers of these um buildings for these respective units note though that this was actually a hard case before mythos so what i mean by that is before mythos there were six locations with six major settlements where you could build these mythical buildings so you could get the centaur elders up to faction limit 12 by building the centaur based building in the six provinces that had access to this mythical building with mythos now the starting regions of all of these unique factions you can play have a new mythical um unique building added to them so now there's more up more um locations so you can get to the faction limit without having to be hard uh based upon the locations where um the developers originally put them when the game came out the only mythical units um that you can that you should try to build on the minor settlements as well is sirens the reason for that is because sirens the buildings for them are only up to level three and each of them instead of giving a unit capacity of two per unit like the other mythical buildings this one is actually three so by building the siren buildings plus three right across this entire location here you now get three six nine already here close very close to the faction limit and then if you go to this province Percote and i believe pegea have two more siren buildings getting you already to 15 so you already are over the faction limit if you build these buildings note that there is a bug here because um all of the provinces where you can recruit mythical units before the change that was added for the unique uh faction starting regions adding mythical buildings um the only uh places or if you could recruit a mythical unit in a province you could recruit them from all the regions in the province this one for the sirens just so you know you cannot build a siren building in this region of this province making it unique in that aspect now with the changes to mythos you can see that for example the starting region of hector you can recruit giants but the other two regions of the province he starts out in does not have that so just no, just take into account how the building structure is for mythical units in the game. The next building type that we want to focus on is temples. Now, the key part about temples is that you want to have at least one region of uh, dedicated to each respective god in the game. The reason for that is because certain um. Uh, heroes like warlord mentors commanders and defender veterans i believe it's all three i might be misremembering have access to generous host favor it gives plus five favor with god of the local temple while garrisoned so that means that instead of decaying by 10 to the favor of a god if you put this guy where you have a respective temple for a god you will only go down by minus five so what you want to do is you want to create uh, get heroes for each of the respective gods you know nine in total so you don't drop in favor for these gods you know if you have nine temples one for each of the respective gods a very important thing about temples is that you want to build them in as many provinces as possible the reason for that is because all temples give you a valuable bonus which is plus 10 to favor gain from a hecatomb as you keep building more of these um temples throughout the map you get plus 10 plus 10 more plus 10 more till you can get to so much hecatomb favor that even popping it once will give you over 
the max cap of 650 favor to get a uh, god that you might have dropped down to zero by accident all the way back up to the max level of 650. Now, in terms of where to or like what temples to build, aside from each of those nine, right, that you want to build in those nine provinces so you decrease how fast they drop down in favor, the key thing here is everywhere that you want to construct production buildings, which is like literally everywhere, you want to build Temple of Hephaestus. Because Temple of Hephaestus, if you look on the left, it gives minus 40% to construction costs for all production buildings in this province. If you stack that with the resource cost reduction for, or, uh, for building resource buildings, you can actually build even the most expensive resource building like the large Apoika that costs gold to recruit for free. And that is freaking insane. And that's how you can save a lot of money uh, throughout the campaign by building these resource buildings for free thanks to building Temple of Hephaestus everywhere that you can. Now, you want to have specific provinces and it's not really that many. You don't really need that many. You want to have a dedicated province for providing units that you recruit after you recruit them with the armor of Hephaestus at tier 4 which gives you plus 15 to armor and plus 15 to melee attack of all units. You don't want to recruit the unit at the Temple of Hephaestus though because you want to recruit them where you have, for example, oh shoot, I, I, should, I shouldn't have clicked that, a Temple of Ares, a Temple of Hera, a Temple of, where's the other one? Athena, or a Temple of uh, Ar Artemis. Why? What the All these that I've mentioned give you bonuses to accuracy, ammunition, if, you're, if it's Artemis, melee defense, if it's Athena, um, charge, bonus and melee attack for Ares and um, morale where Hera is. So what you want to do here is if you want to recruit offensive units, do them in the province where you have a temple of Ares. If you want to recruit defensive units, do it where there's a temple of Athena. If you want to recruit missile units, temple of Artemis and Artemis. I don't know how to say it. And if you want to recruit units that have low morale, you can just give them Temple of Hera. Another thing to take into account is that if you recruit units, like for example, if you're playing Lycia and you uh, build the building Sarpanas Red in you enough, you're going to get to insane levels of offensive unit statistics for Kopesh fighters where recruiting them with Temple of Ares is no longer like what you should be doing because the units are so good offensively that all they need is to be better defensively to just survive long enough to just destroy the enemy. So once you start boosting up melee attack to like above 90 or 80 to really astronomical levels or melee defense for defensive units, recruit these units that are defensive where Temple of Ares is or vice versa for um, offensive units. So then you can better um, help the unit out in its weakness. Wherever you put the build, the Temple of Artemis, Artemis, right? You get the extra accuracy and ammunition for units. Now, where you want to recruit missile units, you want there to be at least one wood settlement, if not two. There's only two places, two commanderies in the game that have two um, wood settlements in them. One of them is Epirus. You can see here two wood regions. And the other is somewhere around here. Oh, Bithynia, but it's only three regions. So it's not necessarily the best out of all of them. So getting back over here, the best location to recruit missile units is actually Epirus with these two wood settlements. Why I say that is because wood settlements give you plus eight ammunition from Master Fletcher. You can also build the Boyer that gives you more missile, sorry, um, uh, more ammunition for recruited units in the province. So if you build the Boyer in four regions, that gives you 24 ammunition total. If you build a Master Fletcher in two regions, that gives you plus 16. So that's plus 16. Sorry, that's 16 plus, I believe I said 24. That's already 40 extra ammunition. And then the extra from, um, where is it? Over here. Oh, go over here. From Artemis is plus 8. That's, I believe, plus 48 total ammunition. And believe me, for units with very low ammunition, like Javelin units, that is insane. 
and that really helps also their combat potential for auto resolve purposes so and if you don't have three of uh, or two wood regions just look for a region with wood for example if we go to the southeast of the map a good place to do this is here in Karia, where you have a wood settlement and no to ports so you can have access to build respective wood regions not have one dedicated to food and then also recruit the build a building of master fletcher to get the extra ammunition now for military buildings you only want to build the military building in the regions where you want to dedicate the respective god to get the bonus to recruitment something i did not mention let me take a step back here is once you recruit these units for example Ares in this in this province artemis in this province make sure that hephaestus is somewhere nearby which actually, i don't even know where the hell i put hephaestus somewhere around here um put hephaestus somewhere nearby so you can, you can move your army over so then you can apply the extra melee attack and armor from the armor of hephaestus in that risk from that respective province now for military buildings right if i'm gonna make this region for artemis i'm only gonna build the buildings where the missile bonus actually applies like marksman range now if i'm gonna build a location for a melee units be it offensive or defensively for lycia i would build the royal barracks in this location aside from looking at uh, uh, units to recruit um from this area oh for Art artemis you can also build uh, uh where you build the artemis uh location the heavy anatolian skirmishers now you also gotta look at not only the military buildings but the special buildings also give you access to units to recruit and if you're playing aeneas 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 however the hell you say it you also get units to be uh, recruitable from the temple buildings they're offensive units so you probably want to do it where you have temple of Ares or um athena if they're already pretty good offensively so if you look at lycia for example he has unique units to build from these buildings right there are many many factions have this so make sure that if you want to recruit for example renowned Kopesh fighters you do it where you have a temple of Ares of or, or Athena or and, and not where you have Artemis or no temple so you get those extra bonuses for your own units now an important thing that you must always try to do is try to maintain your influence above 60 percent 60 percent in literally every province except a very select few which is like the locations that have like no minor settlements like Trinacura here, which is probably the only location that I really care about saying this, because it has no minor settlements. There's no reason here to keep the influence above 60%. So just keep track of that. Everywhere else, you want to maximize influence because the amount of resources that you can make from um, having influence over 60% is bonkers. For example, a food large apoika, it gives you more food from high influence than from not having high influence. That is insane. You can get a total of 990 food from this building if you have influence above 60% versus only getting 310 if you have it below 60%. How you want to do that is there's a building that you want to build in every province where you think you're going to struggle with influence and keep and making sure it goes up and it is a royal palace. If you acquire a region that um already has a temple of zeus you might want to keep it there for now because a temple of zeus also gives more influence over the province there are unique buildings for factions that also can boost up influence you have to look at the respective faction to see if that is the case note though that if you build your major settlements and i think minor settlements uh no just the major settlements if you build your your major settlements up above like level one yeah even i mean level one even for level one building it up you can get more influence in your own province and influence over adjacent provinces which is really helpful to you to just try to manage and make sure that your influence is above 60 percent everywhere you go now a building that i do not recommend necessarily to build that much is the wine merchant you only want to build three of these um to get the three spies once you do that you can dedicate where you would put the wine merchant to other more useful buildings. So I would say that because if you play the gods right and you maximize all the gods or the gods that give public order and you manage it very well, happiness is not going to be an issue anywhere you go on the campaign. It is just how it is. Early in the game, you might struggle with happiness, especially with factions where you want to 
loot and sack and really mess with public order like Achilles, then you can potentially face some happiness issues. But you can shore that up through agents or other manners and still build this building if you want to. You don't necessarily need to. So keep track of this. You want to keep happiness high in regions where, um, let me see, let me see where I have really high happiness. Oh, I'm playing um, Cerberus, so I don't have the effects of happiness necessarily being applied across some of these locations. Let me see where I can, I don't have a Cerberus building built, which is literally everywhere, I believe. I think here is fine, right? Let me see. Yeah, I don't, yeah, it's still it's stuck at zero. Oh, it's because of um the Shade Labor commandment. Oh, whoops. I think I had shave labor literally everywhere ish actually wait maybe not let me give me a second let me go over here oh there we go so here we have 100 happiness and if you see the benefit of this is that this is good for recruitment purposes to lower recruitment costs and local recruitment capacity and also to give you a little bit more growth growth gets kind of crazy once you start maximizing the gods so it's not necessarily like you want to be looking for this um but definitely the recruitment cost and local recruitment capacity is really essential for places you want to recruit units which is really not that many it's like three commanderies in total now, from these administration buildings the one that you like want to rush and just rush it get it take it you know it's yours is the opulent houses line because it gives you a lot of growth and this is really important for you to build up your commanderies as fast as possible which is how you start maximizing your return on the investment through resources so try to go for this so you can get a lot more growth in your province Note that um, major settlements also give more um, growth and also ports give you more growth. So there's a lot of areas where you can start maximizing growth. In food regions, you also have a unique building, the Granary, which gives more growth, which you can also take advantage of. But note that this building line, the second one for the resources, tends to lower influence over the province. But you need to be very careful managing this so you can therefore take advantage of the extra growth. The lumber storehouses you want to or storehouse you want to build it wherever you have one or more wood regions in a um province that's it in a story not more complicated than that as for food storehouse you want to do it where you have a lot of ports and one or more food regions so you maximize the total amount of food that you are producing and you can also lower recruitment costs of all army units so if you want to use a location for recruiting units, do it in a location that has food and wood, if it's going to be for um, missile units. Last but not least, of the administration buildings. This one, I got, I mean, this I love this building. Messenger Square is an essential building to me. Messenger Square helps you combine with um, Favor of Zeus, I, I believe above 300, to get heroes recruited for free. It also gives you a 15% upkeep cost for all units, which is really valuable when you're recruiting units that cost a lot. So you save a little bit of money as the, as the units are being recruited across one or more turns, right? And then you get a minus 12% to construction cost of all main buildings, which is crazy. And finally, you get plus 15% to administration efficiency. Now, I want to point something out very important. Administration efficiency has a max cap of an effective max cap. Meaning that once you reach above 400% administration efficiency, you no longer speed up how fast you go through these um, uh, roll decrees. So some of these take up to a minimum, I think that's the correct term, two turns uh, to actually re go through them. So for example, I think one of them is, uh, let me see which one. I think it's like resilience is one of them. It's like towards the bottom that don't require resources. So if you go for the ones that um, don't cost any resources to recruit and they're uh, like, for example, I think resilience is one of them. If you get to 400% efficiency or higher, those ones will always take two turns to actually finish, um, um, what do you call it, researching. So take that into account. Sure, I, I can showcase, oh my God, look, how, look at this guy. He got so much administration efficiency. At some point it becomes redundant, but the rest of the effects of Messenger Square are still extremely valuable given that even building major settlements it's just super expensive so applying a minus applying a minus 12 percent to construction costs is of essence now take into account something very important gate bastions basically give you a um a garrison additional units for your garrison 
really valuable now in the early game i would say once you get to the late game to the actually has like turn 20 when you start getting like three common theories and really like getting a lot of resources and being really efficient with your um, diplomacy and managing it you, this is not a necessity your armies where you position them should be good enough to protect your settlements and therefore you can save this slot to then use it for special buildings administration buildings and the temple building so keep that into account it is not a necessity but if you're learning the game if you're also um just think that a lot of people could come to this region and you really want to be careful in the early game do it after that you really should be able to if you're at least a veteran you should really learn to manage your armies so you don't waste a building slot in something that reduces your happiness and giving you units that you don't necessarily even need this is not warhammer 2 where garrisons are like a must have because like 50 billion armies come for your ass you know it's not necessarily like that very important and extremely underrated building to get is the watchtower patrols the reason for that is because the plus 300 to experience for all units per turn is extreme it's i mean it's really underrated that if you build this across four regions you're going to get 1200 total experience for units per turn so if you want to sit on your ass with an army let it turtle you can get them the units leveled up pretty damn fast and as you if you're for example building up your economy right building up a lot of like your three or four um first commanderies take your army first build it up with the units that you want then sit that army on its ass and just build up the rest of your commanderies more slowly because you have that extra upkeep but then they're gonna get a ton more chevrons and then you can also greatly slow down the movement range of enemy armies in a province if you build this four times by minus 80 percent and 120 percent to line of sight in, in a region it's also something that's very good if you have a water or sea region based location so i don't really tend to build the chariot building chariots are extremely strong in this game you can really use them to like go through minor settlements like it's nothing like you can just roll through minor settlements with like eight to ten heavy chariots and just call it a day the problem though is that in auto resolve when you have like two to four chariots they tend to actually be taken out very easily auto resolve doesn't really find them very favorable and because this this, this game is based off of warhammer 2 so it has a similar tendency in auto resolve results like that but the problem with this is that um chariots cost a lot of wood and some of them gold to recruit and those are very valuable resources so just take this into account and if you want to take your chances build it and if you if i were to build this i would do it in a temple of Ares because i want chariots to just pound something when they reach it so i want to boost up their melee attack and their charge bonus and then after you know then i just cycle charge them so they keep just rolling through with their char the charge bonus being reapplied on different units as they go through them now something that you should uh learn about the game and you probably have noticed this if you play for a while and you're like oh damn an enemy is attacking one of my settlements oh crap they took it now i retake it the build the building will, used to be tier three if it was minor now it's tier two or tier one is dropped so much i just lost everything that i've built there's an order by which things uh the secondary buildings are eliminated if a if a building drops in level the the one below the first building right below the the main settlement icon is the one that is always there even if the building drops to level one so what i would say to you is i don't think i build okay this is a good example this farming city has a large apoika as the first building that i built so and then next i have another building the second one that gives mo that gives um the second highest magnitude to get this and then the third one i build is the one that gives um plus one percent uh faction wide food per turn from all buildings and a local 20 percent to all resources um multiplier for all resources in this province i would change probably this one this meat milk and millet building to be where the arabo arabo land is but you want to build your most valuable buildings first and then the other ones towards uh the more the less um valuable ones lastly so if an enemy takes your settlements your most valuable buildings are there so you don't lose all that extra production of resources that you're getting and you don't have to waste all that immense construction to rebuild these really expensive buildings now what buildings do you want to build across all your provinces so or resources always 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 this is like a must-have 
the third bu building of the resources, the one in the middle, and the fourth one. Highest base magnitude increase, faction-wide and local province uh, resource inc uh, multipliers. These are must-haves, so you scale and keep getting so much more food or wood, etc. across many locations. Next, if you don't need any more growth, if you have a really high tier um, location and you have the option of either building the first building or the last one from left to right, you can build the first one here, the farmland, right, for example, to get 310. But if you don't have free resource, um, what do you call it? Uh, the possibility of building uh, resource buildings for free, then you would waste resources to get here. And you have to wait a total of one, two, I think a total of like six turns to get this this to 310 you can just build the, the hunter's lodge get 300 and call it a day you're not gonna care about the growth penalty to the province so you can just forget about this and then the next thing that you're probably thinking is bro i can't build an apoika as the first building this is too expensive especially if i'm, if I'm starting in the game this is not the first thing i want to build what you want to do is start with the second building of the resources because it tends to have bonuses that tends to be really good for growth, lowering construction time, if it's a stone building, getting more ammunition, if it's a wood one. It just depends whatever you need for the province. I would say granary for this one, for food, is a must-have. And then the one that lowers construction time, which is the one from, um, what do you call it, from stone buildings, is also a must-have. There's also a very important one to take into account, which is the one for gold. The one for gold lowers construction costs of all buildings by 15%. Really underrated. Now, in terms of gold, this is you gotta take this is very important, okay? Whenever your gold runs out in terms of how much is produced in a province, you still get leftover gold. It I think I forgot, damn, I, I haven't played the game in a while. There is a base value or magnitude of gold that you still make from a province. Even if, if all gold is depleted, I think it was 4%. I can't remember now. It's a little bit. It'll still be dripping, but it adds up. It adds up a lot over time. So if you build the buildings here for gold and you can build the resource buildings for free, so you don't have to waste gold to get gold, right? Like the jeweler here. Take advantage of this. Build this tall. Get as much gold production as you can and call it a day and you're done there. So yeah, that's the priorities there. Start with the second building first, right? Once you've built this to level three and you get you can build resource buildings for free or for very low values, try to build the third and fourth resource buildings, definitely. Keep the, the first one if you already have it or build the, four, the fifth one from left to right so you just get all the base value increase of resource production and you don't care about growth affecting you anymore. Now, I wanna talk about the special buildings this i want to go through all of the factions I'm, uh, yes i'm gonna do this all of the factions all of them so first off lysia start red retinue you want to build this in every single province you acquire because this gives you extra statistical bonuses for all of your recruited kopesh and heavy x warriors faction wide of plus two ap damage and your lysian wing chariots get five percent missile damage and you just keep stacking and stacking and stacking and you can get a 2% upkeep cost reduction for Lysian Wing Chariots, Heavy Axe Warriors, and Kopesh Fighter units. Note that it says all Kopesh Fighters for the 2 AP damage. It's not all. This doesn't apply to the max tier unit. Some factions are like this. If it says all Kopesh Fighters or all, um, I think I forgot what it's called for Aenus. Is the same thing happens with them. Um, it's only the tier 3 unit version that actually gets the bonus applied to them. So just keep track of that and just know about it when you're doing this. Most factions tend to have this sort of building as a special one, like a red, like Sarpedons, Red and You, and then change the name of Sarpedon to another faction. If you see a name like this that gives you statistical bonuses for um, these units, you know, build this building everywhere, everywhere you can, and you're going to get really crazy statistical bonuses on these unique units that your faction has. When it says that there's an extra recruit rank, like plus five to recruit rank of faction elite units, when you hover over a unit, you see that this is like a hexagon and then there's like a shiny um like border around it the shiny border means that it's a faction unique unit the elysian wing chariots have a shiny circle the kopesh fighters they don't have a shiny border so they don't get a plus five to recruit rank 
but the renowned Kopesh fighters have a shiny border. These ones get the plus 5 extra to recruit rank. So keep track of that. You're going to see that some units definitely get that. Lysian champions get it. Renowned Lysian warriors, I'm not sure why, they don't get it. Um, armored Lysian archers, they don't get it. The um, heavy Lysian chariots also do not. So just keep track of that as you go through all of these units so you know what is unique and what isn't so you keep track of where, who gets those chevrons um, wherever you build this. Next, Caravan Station. Build this to get the extra bronze in your major settlements. Specifically, really valuable early to mid game. Once you get to late game, you get so much bronze that this does not even matter anymore. Like, just forget about it. All right, you don't really need this. If you want to recruit chariots, also, you know, build a building because you're going to get a recruitment cost reduction for chariot units. So wherever you have your Temple of Ares province, put the caravan station there and you're going to save a lot of gold and um, wood to recruit the unit there. But I don't really recruit the chariots, even though this is probably one of the best factions for chariots. Um, so just take, take that into account. A valuable uh, building from early to mid game. As for exotic goods trader and market, I would say build it to tier 3 unless you want to get the renowned Kopesh fighters and then you can build this one the reason for that is it's expensive to build i mean it's not really expensive forget forget that little uh, reason what that i was saying that getting it to tier 3 already gives you plus 20 percent to research speed you can easily get with this and other bonuses to research speed to 400 percent administration efficiency boom you're done everything else is redundant that becomes something you don't care about the versus resource production per turn it depletes the deposit so this will help you take like if you start with 70 resources boom it'll keep dropping faster 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 until it's gone and since you don't get the extra the faction wide bonuses for renowned kopesh fighters i prefer to go for the kopesh fighters and call it a day so i don't really see too much of a benefit to go for the renowned kopesh fighters unless i'm not really abusing the statistics of the units in terms of how much i can stack them and then you can go for the renowned kopesh fighters to get them so just take that into account and i would say build it to tier 3 not really a necessity to build it to level uh five per se or auditious oh the ditches oh the ditches are dirty he is unique um compared to us lissia at least and that he has two missile unit based buildings that you can build take that into account i just go for the royal arsenal don't really care about these other units that's just me he gets a unique sort of system for ports where he can build ports above level three to level five and he can get insane amounts of extra benefits with even more resources even more food even more growth so really valuable to get this the other things he gets which are really unique let me go over to here okay so audacious palace mixes the envoys and spies based buildings of other factions except that not completely it all it mixes the recruitment capacity bonus for the envoys and the spies unlocks recruitment of envoys and spies and it gives you the happiness bonus from the spy based building of the other factions but not the influence bonus from the envoy building of other factions just take that into account i would say build this um where you want to recruit your um what do you call it your spy your envoys etc and then deconstruct this you don't need this anymore you can use instead of this the, some of his other unique buildings here that he gets in the resources panel so you can just increase your overall resources that you're getting and just forget about this because it's no longer useful happiness is not a problem in mid to late game you're not going to need any more envoys or spies you're going to get the max cap and the evasion chance to ambushes and the extra success chance to ambushes you're not going to care about anymore because you're going to be expanding past this region by the time you want to get use these bonuses so just forget about that stone houses really valuable I say always build the envoy building and leave it build right for the other factions to get the influence bonus. This has the influence bonus and the growth bonus. So just keep this. Now, if you play your cards right and max out all the gods, you're not even gonna you're not even gonna care about influence up to that point. So you could probably deconstruct this if you want to. But I mean, you really are gonna be managing picking like through scribbles here because he doesn't have as many buildings as other factions to build on his sea regions so i say just leave it you're not really gonna find much else to put there because you really want to maximize his resource production in sea regions and take advantage of them 
and just go from there. And then Messenger Square, just like any other faction, put it wherever the hell you can because of that construction cost reduction for all main buildings and getting to the 400% research speed. He has, additionally, three resource buildings in that he can put on major settlements. Crazy. He can get Dorian Laborer's House, which gives up to 400 food per turn at a penalty to happiness. Definitely manageable. Always build it. Illyrian Market. Extra wood at a cost to influence. Build this as you're building stone houses. So you net gain influence over time. So you get the wood and you don't necessarily lose influence if you build these together. Finally, Royal Collectors. Build this literally everywhere except where you want to recruit units. That's it. In a story, it's going to give you more gold. It's going to reduce your growth. Not that much. You're fine. Build it wherever you're not going to recruit any more um, melee units. Something very important that you need to take into account is that landlocked regions for Odysseus are not the same as other factions. So you see how this one is a C region here for Odysseus? If you look at how much food it produces, it's 240 per turn. This landlocked one, instead of giving you 240, it gives you 360. That's a net increase in food production, helping you kind of offset that you don't you can't build the buildings in this region. In my opinion, it is good to get minor settlements um, that are landlocked as Odysseus. And, but in terms of the major settlements, you don't get any additional benefits from the major settlements as you would from other factions. And since you can't really reduce the construction costs for landlocked major settlements, I would say that they're not really that valuable to get. And if you get and if you do get them, not necessarily that valuable to level them up. You can keep them at the level you get them, leave them there, and just focus on building the minor settlements, including the landlocked ones, so you get your resource production to really good levels. Next one, Ajax, Salami. So the thing about Salami is that his Boyer building is unique and that he cannot just build it to level three. He can build it to level four. So he can give even more ammunition up to plus four net more than um, you would um, in like in a four region province. If actually, my bad, I, I actually said that wrong because it only gets to level four. You get a total of plus two more ammunition for units. Um, if you recruit them in regions where, like for example, Epirus, right, that has four regions, since you can build the major settlement based boyer to level four, then it's a good bonus. You know, it's a good thing. Um, you also get uh, an additional unique missile unit from building to building this at level four. It, one of his best units is a freaking nasty one, uh, Tessuer's Bowman, which is really good. Now, in terms of his other buildings, now he's a very unique um, resource kind of guy. Yeah, <laughs> resource kind of guy. Okay. Um, so he has a great artisan workshop, right? The great artisan work. Uh, let me. God damn it, great. Okay, artisan workshop. Like some other um, special buildings that you can build in factions, you can build this one above level three, and you can build in minor settlements. Some factions you can build some of their buildings, uh, unique uh, special buildings in minor settlements. But the thing about this one is that every single time he levels it up, he gains an ancillary. Ancillaries that you can trade away with with his uh party based or feast based whatever it's called faction mechanic really valuable to build this um in provinces and also you can reduce how much it costs in stone and bronze to build things in the province which is really valuable i would say that this is something worth getting but note how much it costs to build it is really expensive so i would say if you're starting to get to a point in the campaign where you're already building things really, really dirt cheap with Temple of Hephaestus and other ways to reduce um, resource building construction costs, building this kind of becomes a bit of a uh, net loss because you require gold to build this. You're no longer trading away ancillaries because you're probably not using the feast mechanic anymore. And you already have Hephaestus at over 600, so you don't need the favor of Hephaestus. Early game, pretty good to build this to level 2. For example, it doesn't cost gold. And just build it up to level 2, get a total of plus of 170 favor of Hephaestus and 2 ancillaries and reduce the bronze and stone construction costs which can potentially affect you in the early game big time. So early game, build it to up to level 2, really valuable. Towards the late game, it kind of becomes a bit redundant to get this to level 3, but you can still do it if you still want to use the feast mechanic and keep lowering stone construction costs, but I don't really see the point of it because the gold cost 
is steep and I don't find it's worth it. Ajax is red in you. Just like Sarpedon's red in you. Literally build this everywhere that you can. It'll give you plus 5% missile damage to his unique slingers and his Tezor's bowmen, which are nasty. And then all heavy infantry units in his campaign get 5% more melee defense. Not just his awesome Ajax units or his tier 3 units like Kopesh fighters of uh, Sarpedon, right? It's all of them. And then his Arena of the Mighty. Oh my goodness. I freaking love this, this faction. Early game is kind of boring with the... I don't know, like, not that many units that you can use in level 1s or 2. But, look at this crap, man. Arena of the Mighty. Oh, wait, what am I clicking this? Okay. You can get a ton more experience for melee units, which stacks really well with Rush Tower patrols, right? You can reduce recruitment costs of all units by 20%. Specifically valuable because these Ajax units cause a lot of gold to recruit. And, plus 6 to recruit rank of heavy infantry units. You can get them at max chevrons with this and a, um, I think, respected effect level prior to Athena, and then 5% more melee charge or more charge bonus for heavy infantry. These, I mean, these units have 24 and 20 um, charge, and that's that's freaking insane already because one of these is just a defensive unit, Ajax's wall. So you can keep stacking that extra 5% to make them go crazy. So these two buildings must have early game, I would say Craftsman Square, build it up to here. After that, build it, um if you feel like you need more stone and bronze if not forget about this and get more of the administration based buildings okay sparta this one's pretty damn easy all right take into account that his watchtower remember i told you it has very underrated units that you might just completely forget about them if you rush the other buildings here he has axemen which have pretty good overall ap damage for the early game then he has laconian hillman a unit that has fear and flanking attack improved which greatly lowers the melee defense of a flanked unit this unit is super good for Sparta, especially in the early game. I would say this unit, a must-have, and along with the Light uh, Spear Runner. So this building, really good to build. I would say recommended. Get Laconian Hillman, go have a party with them. Melania Sworn Fighters. This is like those red and new buildings for the other factions. Plus 5 recruit rank for faction elite units. So look for the little shiny icon on the units. Like, for example, Heroic Axe Warriors, Axe Champions. Uh, who else has it over here? Da -da -da -da, over here. Actually, it's only them. Wow, it's only them. Damn. That's actually kind of interesting that it's only those units. Oh, right. And they like Spear Runners. How could I forget? Yep. And they like Spear Runners also have it. So definitely all, all units in this line for military camp and armory can take advantage of Menelia Swarm Fighters. So good to build this with this, right? Uh, Temple of Ares, Temple of Athena, if you want to boost up these units any further to get the extra recruit rank and statistics. This one boosts faction-wide AP damage of Light Spear Runners. And renowned Laconian Axemen, which I think is uh, this guy right here. Just take that into account, them two. And then you can reduce the upkeep of Light Spear Runners and renowned Laconian Axemen. Really valuable. Light Spear Runners, one of the most awesome units in the game. Highly recommended. Get Pop them with Menelia Storm Fighters everywhere. Bam, crazy units. Now, when you get these alliances, right, with these other factions, and say you want to recruit some of their units, this is where it gets very interesting, okay? If you're going to recruit, uh, if you're going to do a military alliance with a faction that you want to recruit its units that don't cost a lot, build the Temple of Dyke. So you can get the recruitment time reduction from his call to arms mechanic. If you're going to recruit expensive units like Ajax's Wall, Ajax's Red in you, units like that, the missile units of, um, what do you call it, Odysseus, build the Feast Hall where you want to recruit those units. So just take that into account. And uh, note that from the bronze buildings, you know that they give, um, what do you call it? The bronze buildings also give extra recruit rank for units recruited, uh, shielded infantry units, my bad. And the boyer gives more recruit rank for missile units. These recruit bonuses apply to the units recruited from the call to arms. So just take that into account. So you build this wherever you want to recruit units and you apply the recruit rank bonuses respectfully so you get them at a higher rank. Note that these two buildings that you see here, you can build them in the minor buildings as well. So what you can do is if you want to get, for example, Ajax's wall with a total reduction to cost, say of La in a four region province, you can drop the recruitment cost by 10% and 10% times 30, 30%. 
so you can drop the recruitment cost by 50%. So all that gold you have to spend for Ajax's walls, drop it by 50%, which is crazy. And then for recruitment time, you can lower it by up to minus four in a four region province, which then lets you recruit these units really fast. Let me see if I can showcase that. Uh, I can probably showcase it here. Um, but yeah, you can recruit these units really fast in not that many turns and therefore make life a lot easier for you to use the call to arms mechanic as fast as possible. So for Aenis, Aenis, whatever. So he has three unique buildings that you can build. Ignore the rest of these. These are all based uh, for the Hydra, the next four here that are highlighted. So the Hasawa village, you can build across the main and the minor settlement of the provinces. This one is a really valuable one to get because you can get Dardanian, Rabble, and Mob at max recruit rank. You can improve the happiness greatly in the province. Recruit priestesses at 4 times 4, 16 higher up in recruit rank. Note that you can just use the max rank recruitment um, strategy that I've done in, I'll in another video. And just forget about this. So you can just recruit the priestesses, the envoys, and the spies at max rank. So you can ignore that um, that appears here. And then the extra replenishment is extremely important to let you mass expand, specifically in the northeast of the map in the early game, as easy as possible. Once you get like really good like expansion and get like four commanderies, and you don't necessarily have to keep expanding like crazy, and then you build up your commanderies more efficiently and carefully, you can disband or destroy the Sasawa village you no longer needed. So you can then remove that huge penalty to influence over the province and therefore start building more resource and administration buildings if it's a major um region in your commanderies as for the other building uh buildings ins chosen this one's valuable also because it helps the um dardanian sworn fighters which is a phenomenal flanking unit in the game get more ap damage and lower their upkeep costs along the uh, along with the upkeep cost of heavy anatolian spearmen which just makes them a, a stronger front line to just hold the line um, as long as possible with the plus two morale that you can keep applying faction wide so the unit does not end up breaking they just keep holding the line forever and then this is just like kopesh fighters is the dardanian sworn fighters get the ap damage bonus but the renowned dardanian sword fighters don't get the ap damage bonus but even then this unit can become a really great flanking unit so building Aenis Chosen is recommended across all provinces in the game. Now, Gret Temple of Aphrodite, I would say is extremely overrated. Now, why do I say that? You can easily keep Aphrodite maxed out. So forget that 300 more favor to Aphrodite. That's just whatever. That's not a necessity. Recruitment cost reduction for, their for renowned fighters. They cost bronze and food. They don't cost gold. You can manage that. That's not something that's hard to, to deal with. Plus five growth faction wide. Now that is really good. But once you start mass expanding, even without this plus five to growth faction wide in the campaigns in mid to late game, you're going to get to a point, even without this building, where you're getting so much growth throughout your many commanderies that you don't have the resources in wood or stone to build them all and keep up with how much growth you're already getting. So this becomes excess growth that is, that is not a necessity. This is just on top of what you can get from the gods and administration efficiency and heroes that already and commandments that already makes it over the top. So not a necessity. The plus 15 to influence over adjacent provinces. This is good, but you're already at a good level by building up the major settlement with getting plus five to influence over adjacent provinces. And this building costs 252 gold to, to build. That is a valuable resource. And I cannot understate that. Why waste 252 gold to build this when you can um, use that three times, you know, say you build this, you're going to build this building three times. That's enough to switch a level four temple to another one to get the favor if you dropped it anywhere and potentially switch it from one, a build, a temple that, for example, Hera, that you don't need to have fast this. So then you can build everything of um, uh, that are minor resource buildings for free, including the Apoikas that cost an immense amount of gold to recruit. So I would say that not it's an overrated building. I really wouldn't build it that much, if at all. I would go for the Aenis Chosen and the Hasawa Village early to mid game to keep popping Dardanian Mob and Rabble like crazy to mass expand 
And then I, when I get my economy up to a certain level, I can switch over to getting, um, what do you call it? The heavy Anatolian spearmen to hold the line. And then I can go for the Dardanian sworn fighters to get the bonuses to their AP damage. So they can just munch up the enemy when flanking like crazy. Note though that he also gets um, like a unique building structure where he gets two buildings to recruit melee units in the military slot. So take that into account. And then Dardanian Chargers are a really powerful unit to recruit with really massively great stats. So just take that into account. And they have flanking attack improved. This is a really powerful unit to get. And he also gets Dardanian Defenders and Fearless Swordsmen, which is really good. So just to keep track of that, is that you have access to some really good units. But note that their statistics don't get faction wide based buffs like what you see here from the ANS Chosen building, like you would like you would get from um the Ajax's retinue building, the one for Sparta, um, etc. The bonuses here apply to heavy Anatolian spearmen or Dardanian sworn fighters. I really wish that they apply to Dardanian chargers because these units are freaking awesome to use, and I would want them to get even crazier in combat with their statistics. So for Hippo, Hippolyta. So Hippolyta gets two main um, special buildings that you can build. They are both really good. The reason for that is that Amazon Treasures is a really valuable resource to try to get as much as you can. And I would say only build these on the major settlements so you maximize right your overall food production. Ignore what I'm doing here. You know, do as I say, not as I do kind of thing. You know, don't build these unique buildings on the minor settlements. Build them on the major ones so you can maximize your resource production on the minor settlements. As for this location, what you want to do is you are for the for the special buildings. The Sanctuary of Asclepius gives you a good bonus to replenishment, which I mean your army is probably gonna be gone by the time you build this up to level five. So okay, whatever. The growth is valuable on level two and three to just get it up and running, get more um growth in the region. Happiness, not bad, it's a little bit of a base increase. The Amazon treasures, though, is the key part. You want to keep maximizing your Amazon treasures. So you can level up your heroes. Yeah, let me go to the, what do you call it? To the Amazon Kingdom. You can level up your heroes, your units. You can um finish recruiting or building up a building. You can finish completing a royal decree really fast. You can get a diplomatic bonus to deals, which sure, she can't confederate anybody. So it's not really going to be as you know effective as other factions getting diplomatic bonuses, um uh, you know, as mechanics or whatever. But it's an additional one that she can get as well. And so just take the crown of that. And then she can instantly finish upgrading a main building, which is just crazy with this little button here. And you just need to, you know, I need to unlock the milestone to level five, which I haven't. And then Royal Decrees with this feat here is how you can finish building a Royal Decree at the moment and finish it completely. So definitely really good overall two special buildings. I would say build them on the major settlements and then maximize your resource production in the minor settlements because you don't necessarily need to be building these two buildings on the minor settlements um for any reason in terms of how she recruits units they all his or her base units come from her uh, major settlements and then her military buildings basically increase recruit rank of units in the location reduce upkeep cost of units of certain weapons or types in the province reduce recruitment cost uh and also they unlock initiations to upgrade the units to other units so some so for example here is like melee units royal stables is the what do you call it the uh horses so sorry calf when i say horses um trial gardens is missiles chariots chariot arena is chariots which amazon champions are just completely bonkers and freaking awesome unit and that's about it here so for paris paris gets paris companions which increases the recruit rank of faction elite units by plus five increases the ap i'm oh, sorry the ap the missile damage of Trojan nobles, which is the lesser tier unit, these guys, not the max tier uh, Trojan princes, and archer chariot units by 2%, and it reduces the upkeep cost of Trojan nobles and archer chariots as well by 2%. So really valuable building. I would say literally build it everywhere because it can get to a point where the Trojan nobles become better combat units than the Trojan princes with all the bonuses that you can apply to them, which is pretty freaking awesome. And then you can also recruit all like these uh, faction uh, unique uh, units, elite units, my bad, like Champions of Troy, etc. at max rank more easily. Now, additionally, he and Hector get access to the Priam's Palace building. This building is really valuable early game, specifically early game. Once you get to mid to late game, 
as you can see in the top left of my food it gets to a point where food is absurd how much you're making so this becomes redundant to build especially because at tier 3 this damn thing causes gold to recruit and it becomes pointless pointless to use all this amount of wood and gold to just get happiness which you will no longer care about it'll be just be managed all fine and then extra food which you're already gonna have enough of so forget about it this is just early game and that's about it his unique building here is another unique building my bad is helen's palace it reduces the cost of organizing a feast for paris sorry helen oh my bad i was using a mod for this that's may that's what tweeted uh paris as faction leader as helen so the names are all messed up here but anyways um you reduce the construction or the cost of organizing a feast which is not necessarily a necessity let me let's see how much does it actually cost to organize a feast food and bronze dirt cheap just forget about it i mean those two resources you can easily get an abundance of so that becomes something that you don't necessarily need you uh, you increase the chances of somebody attacking your settlement so okay like if you want somebody to prioritize it i really don't use this strategically so it becomes another redundant uh thing and then 50 percent for own units for starting the province here so this is actually valuable if you want to put this where you have military recruitment locations like where you have temple of aries where you have um temple of athena artemis etc this building is really important to put there so those armies that are so far away can just get in the water and have all that extra campaign movement range initially really good the extra growth valuable if you would just build this for the first two turns and get plus 10 to growth and then plus two to influence or adjacent provinces valuable i only say valuable right because i've kind of said in for anus that it's not because this costs so low amount of resources to build this one for example versus the other one that it's fine it's fine to get this extra influence over adjacent provinces at a, at a very low amount of cost to getting the building so i would say really good one specifically for military based buildings and that is about it so for hector heroes wall really good to recruit where you have temple of athena to recruit heroes so you can get them for free if in case um zeus drops a zero or you don't have messenger square built or sorry uh zeus favor drops below 300 or you don't have messenger square built here heroes hall also gives you a good amount of, free, of experience per turn uh, for all garrison units so you can level them up really fast it's an interesting um thing here so you can ma mix this with um what's it called the watch tower patrols so you can get extra experience which is really valuable and then more morale for fighting in regions so I can help your units get better auto resolve chances by boosting up their own morale in the region. He also gets Priam's Palace. We already talked about this for Paris. Good early game. Level 1, level 2. Level 3, it costs gold. Redundant. Happiness. Don't really care about it so much. Food is important early game. Mid to late game, you already have... You can get insane amount, amounts. So you don't really care about this. Trojan Walls. It basically makes your armies better to defend the region. Which is fine and all, but you're going to be expanding like crazy. So it doesn't become necessarily a necessity to build it to the highest level. I would say that only build this if you want to recruit the champions of Troy, which you do want to recruit. Because so like only build this in like we have Temple of Athena or a Temple of uh, Ares or Hera. And then you want to build Hexer's Guard legit everywhere on the map. So you can get the extra melee defense bonus to Guards of Troy and Heavy Shock Spears. Know that when it says Guards of Troy, this units get the bonus, not the Champions of Troy. So important to take that into account. You can also get extra recruit rank for both of these units. So you can get the max, max level and reduce their upkeep costs greatly. Not only of the Guards of Troy, but the Heavy Shock Spears. Where the hell are they again? I thought they were up. Uh, where the hell were they? The Heavy Shock Spears. Hold on. Oh, yeah, here. Damn, I totally forgot about this. Yeah, so these units are very good for flanking. You don't necessarily get that many units as Hector with flanking attack improved, except Hector Chosen that costs a fair good amount of gold, and you can just get the heavy uh, shock spears for no gold cost, and then just get them at a lowered upkeep cost, and you can just keep putting them across your army, so you can focus on building heavy shock spears, the guards of Troy, and then whenever you can afford, Hector Chosen and Champions of Troy to really start putting a hurting on the enemy okay when you're playing achilles you get access to three special buildings here and you really important to take this into account achilles war circle similar to all those other ones that boost up the, the stats of units right faction wide uh, based so this one is plus four not plus five to recruit rank of all faction elite units right next 
you can reduce the recruitment cost of Achilles elite units, which are own our, of course, armies and province, is elite units, if you look at them, right, include a missile unit called the Aegean Javelin Men, so they get that applied to them. Aegean Runners, basically, I think everyone in this uh, building line of this special building of the here, building here of the Myrmidon Barracks, and then aside from that, I don't think anybody else, let me, let me go through them, I don't think anybody else counts for a faction unique unit in his roster, exactly. So all the units here get that bonus applied, which is great, uh, along with the plus four to recruit rank, then he gives plus 6% to melee attack of Thessalian Marines, which is this one, not the higher tier one. And then minus 2% to upkeep cost of Thessalian Marines. And then this melee attack and upkeep cost also applies to champions of Pythia, make them, making them even stronger. So, uh, or sorry, a stronger with melee attack and reducing their upkeep cost to make them more um, valuable um, over time as you keep decreasing the upkeep cost. So really valuable, one, valuable building to get and legit good to build everywhere. You also have the Statue of Achilles. Now the thing about this building is that the Statue of Achilles, you can't build on the minor building, which I was like, damn, I wish I could. I could have stacked insane amounts of charge bonus, but it kind of would have been broken if you could. Uh, this doesn't cost that much to uh, recruit. It's plus two to recruit rank of faction elite units. So you can get plus six with these two buildings combined. Minus 5% for all rec our units recruited in the province. Not bad good especially if you're recruiting units that cost gold and plus 20 percent to charge of recruited units in the province great for units that have high charge bonus like two-handed thessalian marines pelagic thessalians so you can make them even stronger and then if you look at myrmidon barracks okay this 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 is this, this, this just gets crazy so myrmidon barracks here let me let me showcase this to you you can build this the le the tier three of this building you can build it on minor settlements. So say you have a four region province like um, this one up here or um, Aeolia here. You get Aeolia here. No ports. You just focus it on military purposes, right? You build a military barrack level three across all four regions. That's going to give you plus 16 to melee attack and then plus 20 to influence over adjacent provinces. Crazy. Does cost a lot to build this. Keep that in mind. And in the major building, you were, you get this up to the highest level, netting you plus four more melee attack to units recruited and plus 10 more influence over adjacent provinces. You know, these buildings are ex really expensive to build, but that extra melee attack plus eight in the main building and in the plus four, it, you know, times three, 12 from the minor settlements, plus the faction white bonus from Achilles' war circle and the extra charge from a statue of Achilles nets him the ability of recruiting units from his special building area um, for very good offensive capabilities. Now, something I did not talk about Salami that I can talk about, um, what do you call it, about uh, Achilles as well, is that this bonus applies to all units, if the Myrmidon Barracks one applies to all units recruited here, the Myrmidon Barracks one, right, or the Myrmidon Building one, and also the one for Statue of Achilles. This can apply to mythical units. You can recruit giants in a province like that. So I would say instead of talking about building those four buildings in this region, Aeolia, you can do it in Parabia here that you can recruit giants. So you can get giants with insane more melee attack, insane more charge bonus, and make them even stronger. Similarly for Salami, what happens there is that you can get bonuses to heavy units. But I think it's I think it's recruited in that province, if I'm not mistaken, the bonus. So you can just apply it for giants as well since they tend to be heavy and there you go that's really it for achilles so for penny this is a completely unique building structure given that she's a horde faction right so if we look at her let's go to over here okay so when you start the campaign the first building you want to build is to capture slaves because you get extra horde growth at a cost of food you want to maximize horde growth as much as possible so you can build up your armies next you want to build up your amazon horde to the highest level you can replenish your hero very easily given that heroes in these horde armies tend to suffer a lot um in auto resolve chances big time and you can get more horde growth really valuable and you get 300 to experience of all units really good to keep get these units to max chevrons next you want to get apprentice smiths all the way up to master level to get 15 more damage for all units and plus 24 for all freaking units freaking crazy so you can maximize the initial units that you're getting as you're going through this now you're playing um penny 
any is all about the daughters of Ares. So you want to get, as you're building up the Master Smiths, you also want to get the Ares War Cult. So you can unlock an initiation rite for daughters of Ares. So you're building up the Ares War Cult, the Master Smiths, and then to finalize, you actually want to build a Hephaestus building first because initi initiation rites, aka upgrading the units from one type like Labyrinth Infantry to the Daughters of Ares, it costs a lot of initiation right to do it. What you can do here is put, build the, temp the processions of Hephaestus, uh, upgrade the units to Daughters of Ares, and make sure that when before you do you recruit these units, when you recruit the base level uh, version of the units, which is the where are they? The war band, right? The war band upgrade to the Labyrinth Infantry and then to the Daughters of Ares, recruit them. So they start out with the Hephaestus armor already, and that armor bonus of 50 million attack and armor stays applied all the way to Daughters of Ares. And then you want to switch the processions of Hephaestus to processions of Ares. So now you get plus 15 to charge of all units and plus 12% to melee attack of all units. This is all early game, right? Once you've done these things, these steps, then you can still build, start building up the rest of the things. You can get, um, you're really not going to be upgrading archer units with her um, army, so you don't have to build this one. You don't have to build the nomadic sacraments, but you're going to get to a point where you're running out of buildings. So you're going to have to put these ones towards the end. But aside from that, you can focus after the temple, the war master smiths, Ares war cult, and household slaves. You can focus the skirmish party to get more treasures looted after battle, way more income from raiding, and 15% more income from raising and you already get a really nasty army then you can get mounted scouts so you can get extra line of sight on the map which is really valuable now what you want to end up doing when you start getting a second army is you want to create an army dedicated for recruitment purposes that army we don't care about skirmish party we don't care about um mounted scouts what we care about is having access to all the initiation rights having processions of Hephaestus built and then you use that army to recruit all of the units that you want to get and then you move the respective units to the armies that have processions of Ares, processions of uh, Artemis, of Athena so they can get those bonuses. There's a big difference in how temples work for Penny versus other factions. Athena, Ares, Artemis, and Hera, the bonuses they give, actually Hera doesn't even give morale when you're playing Penny, the bonuses that Ares, Athena, and um, Artemis give are not upon recruitment. They're just applied to units in the army. So as long as you recruit the units with Hephaestus, so you don't have to re-upgrade the units, and you lower how much initiation rights cost, then you just keep moving on the units to respective armies with other temples, so then you get the bonus of the armor and melee attack from Hephaestus, and then the bonus from the other temples that is on the other horde army that you move the units to. In terms of Diomedes, right? His faction has Diomedes' retinue, which gives more melee attack to Argive Axemen, renowned Axemen, and Argive Swordmasters, tier 5 units. Freaking crazy. Most factions, it's just tier 4 or tier 4 units. Tier, tier 4 or tier 3 units. And he gives more charge bonus to heroic axe runners. Now, I want to I want to talk about that because my, my fuse blows every time I think about it. Heroic Axe War X Runners. I love how these units look. I love their statistics. Basically flanking glass cannons. But keyword, glass. That glass applies an auto resolve. These units can get to insane charge bonus, freaking crazy for flanking. But in auto resolve, they just get dumpstered like bad. Like just freaking five units dead from a basic auto resolve. So I love the unit, but they suffer. So I wouldn't recommend even getting those units, but get the Ar Argive Swordmasters and the renowned Axemen, which I absolutely love. Next, you have Army Supplier. Diomedes is the Confederation King, because he can get a diplomatic bonus from Favor of Zeus, a diplomatic bonus from his um, faction unique mechanic, the Dominance, which gives, I believe, plus 20 or plus 25, I can't remember now, uh, diplomatic bonus. So what you want to do is you want to manipulate the balance of power once you get to turn 40 to turn, turn 60, which is when you can start doing confederations and you want to build the army supplier in a four region province to lower upkeep costs for units in this province by a total of 60 percent you stack that with messenger square 
lowering upkeep costs in the region by 15%, and you get three armies with three envoys attached to that to the to these armies, you can get them there for free. So recruit a mass amount of armies. Diomedes' units are very cheap to recruit, and I mean dirt cheap to recruit. They don't cause gold, it's just bronze and food. You can mass recruit elite units, have them with free upkeep, and then you balance of power will tilt in your favor like crazy, and you can confederate with a massive balance of power and also manipulate diplomacy like crazy with keeping these three free upkeep armies in a region and just keep destroying the rebellions that appear in the region. And once you confederate everyone, just forget about it. Just destroy the army supplier, disband the three armies, move the envoys elsewhere, and then you've com completed confederations ASAP and finalized it, you know, as soon as possible. Next, he has Hall of War. This building, I would only build it where you were, have a Temple of Athena to recruit heroes because it gives skill tactician for heroes recruited in the province and you want to give that to them because it's like more, I think, ambush and uh, I think more melee attack. I think it's also this, I can't remember now, but it's good to get. Favor of Athena, like every all these other unique special buildings, forget about it. I don't care about favor for gods. You can max it out without it. And 800 more experience for heroes per turn. So the place where you put army supplier on the four regions should be a four region province with Athena to get the units recruited with more melee defense with the heroes at a higher rank. So you boost up the stats of the units with the, the skills of the heroes even further. All of this put, goes together to make him the balance of power manipulation and the diplomacy king and confederation king in the game. Okay, the final hero to talk about his faction is Agamemnon, the white ruling king. So the thing about Agamemnon is that he has a couple of unique buildings. None of them can be built on the minor settlement and he can boost up the recruitment rank of the units in his own, you know, that he wants to recruit with a statue of Agamemnon, given five more melee defense, eight more morale and four more influence over adjacent provinces. Not bad. And more enemies will attack this region. Okay, not bad. Doesn't cost that much. Then he has Agamemnon's host. This is the one that boosts up the stats of units. Plus five to recruit rank of faction elite units, which includes the tier three light javelin men. And then he gives 5% to range of light javelin men units. You can get these guys to insane levels of range by building this building in every single major settlement. Plus two morale to shield the spearmen and club warrior units. Club warrior units are his secret sauce, man. You can't see them here because they're in a port and I, I haven't, I don't know, I don't think I've ever played my CNA past like turn five, but okay, I'm not saying that on a build guide for Troy, you did not hear me just say that. So club warriors are a insane unit in the game that have great, great precursor javelins. So what you want to do is light javelin men are going to destroy the enemy from range with their crazy range that they have. And as the enemy is coming forward, they're already going to be super weak. Shielded spearmen will hold the line with the extra morale and club warriors will just flank the enemy to just completely destroy them and then he has super nasty where the hell are they where the hell are his freaking freaking unique oh agamemnon's guards and agamemnon's companions which are oh my god i love these units man this guy's guy man so prideful so everybody should build a statue of agamemnon anyways i'm just messing around so definitely build the agamemnon's host statue of agamemnon where you want to recruit units only and then this one's unique. Champions Hall, you want to build where you are not going to recruit units because you get a 40% recruitment cost of all army units where you recruit units. That's a recruit rank for all units. It's not bad, but it's kind of like a like a paradox, right? But more recruitment costs or more recruit rank for all units. It's not a necessity because you can already get all units at max rank that are un faction unique. And those are the ones you really want to be getting throughout the campaign. And you can get them at max rank with the chevrons of um sorry with the prayer to athena with um the agamemnon's host and with um certain heroes that you uh use to recruit units or also i think a uh, spice actually increase recruit rank if you go for that skill and then he also increases recruit rank of heroes which is great he can recruit heroes up to rank 15 which is the highest in the game and that's crazy and then he also gives more recruit rank of agents, which I don't care about because I can already pop agents for free recruited at max rank. And then plus five to diplomatic relations with Danans 
Given that he's the only faction that can do vassals, this is very essential to get factions in your favor to then vassalize them. So really good uh, building overall. And it also unlocks the position of La Wagatas, which you just need to unlock once and you're basically done with that. So basically with that, you can then start out to get more diplomatic relations with Dana with Achaeans faction wide. And then you can get plus two recurring for all units, letting you easily get what you need here. And then you can start moving on and filling up the rest of these fields on the right. So then continuing in terms of the rest of these buildings, he has Tomb of Kings. You build this, you know, wherever you want to. And you start getting a ton of different, uh, re all the resources. You can start getting more of them across every single one of your vassals. Today you get like 15 vassals, right? And, okay, you're not going to get 15 vassals. Maybe you can. Actually, you can get a lot of vassals, but I'm just, yeah, it's probably a very high number. Then you get a lot of vassals and you start building this. You start getting a ton of resources. It does cost a lot of wood, gold, and stone to build. So I would say, me thinking about this here, it is it appears to be a very good building to build, but the recu the cost of building this is very steep. So if you're going to play a game with a lot of vassals, I can say we're building this multiple times might become beneficial to do. But at the cost that it has, if you're just going to have one to three vassals, I don't really see the point of building this across many of your regions. It's just not going to be worth it. So overall... I think that's it here in terms of what to look for um, in the buildings for all of the different heroes in the game. When you're building the major settlements in the game, you're going to see that they're all called Cyclopean Citadels. But then you might be like, no, that's not true. Troy is actually unique. And you're right about that. Troy is unique. If you look at it, it actually is called Troy. And it produces gold and food. And it gives a faction wide to influence of plus 10, which is crazy. So definitely Troy is unique. But did you know that there's two more regions that are unique in the game in terms of their major settlements? Thebes actually is unique and it gives a lot of food. This is the important part. A lot of stone. So Thebes is actually the stone capital of the game because it has a stone region, which is what other all other commanderies that have stone regions have at a maximum. And then he gets and then it also gets a also a base magnitude production of stone from the unique building, major building of Thebes here. And then continuing, we have Mycenae, which is also unique here, where it actually produces wood at 176 at this location. It's not necessarily um, what I would call the wood capital of the game because that's Epirus, but Epirus is far away from most factions. Mycenae is usually in the purview early in the game to late game of all factions. So I would say it is probably the most common uh, location where you would engage with that is at the very top of wood production in the game. There's unique special buildings based on different provinces in the game that you can actually build unique buildings in, but not all of them are worth building. So let's start. This one is Cyclopean Wall. It's found in Mycenae. This gives faction-wide 15% more morale for all units when under siege. Let's you last longer when under siege and um, reduces attrition. The morale is great because it actually helps with auto resolve. So I would say that this one is a, excuse me, must have to build. In Pylos, here in the southwest, a must have to build is the Royal Baths. This used to be bugged as the patch notes for Mythos said that this was fixed. You can get plus four influence faction wide and plus 2% casualty replenishment unrestricted. Phenomenal. I would say this is a must have to build as well in this building here that we see with the little eye actually doesn't have a freaking eye um eye icon at least here in the next to the name you can actually build a cyclop cyclops cave that gives you a whopping 2000 food per turn to build and more favor from poseidon the favor is not something that i would say is a necessity because you can easily max out all favor with all the gods and keep it up as well so that's not really what i want to sell here Getting the extra food is good. Definitely something good to get. But, but, this specific Cyclops location, know that there's three in the game. That one, this one here in Rhodes also has that eye. And then this one up here is a two region one, west of Troy. The one west of Troy and the one by Sarpedon here in the southeast are worth getting because you get minor settlements and you can keep multiplying the totality of food that you can produce to immense levels. Over here, 
I could say if you don't really prioritize it, it's not a must have to actually get this up to the highest level because that extra food that you get, you really don't get local resource production multipliers to it. And it costs a lot to actually build it. And you can't reduce the construction cost of this, the 256 gold that it costs to um, build this as you can for resource buildings because at which you can actually build those for free. So I would say a Cyclops cave in the Southwest is not a must have to build, but definitely a must have in the other two locations that it can be built. A build, a unique building that is for Corybantes based units, which is this one that you see here with the Corybantes icon, which is a shield. I think that's a, I think that's a shield. Um, so this building here is a Pyrocius arena, which gives more favor of a, of a Hera. I think that's overrated. It does give you plus 12% to battle speed of Corybantes. And that stacks with where you can build it also in the game, which is all the way north up here uh, in this location in South. So you can get up to plus 24% extra battle speed bonus to Corybantes. Now, I would say that that is a building that depending if you want to use Corybantes, it's worth it to get it. Personally, I find that they're a bit glass cannon-ish um, or they're, they're really useful with the flanking attack improved and their insane abil battle ability. So it is really valuable to build it um, if you want to use the Corybantes. If not, it is not worth building these two buildings. Similarly, for Spartoi, we get access to, in Thebes, a unique tier 5 building that boosts up the melee damage of Spartoi by 20 and gives more favor of Ares. Not valuable. Forget about that. So we can get this here in Thebes. And then if we go all the way up to the north here in Edonis, we can actually find this building up here as well up to plus 40 more melee damage to spartoy not bad i find this spartoy to be a great unit both in truth behind the myth and in mythos so really valuable to get it especially now that in mythos when it that it came out you can you, you know you're not limited like Corybantes to only recruiting one of the unit um per se you can recruit tons of spartoys as long as your favor of Ares is at 600 or higher Every time that you recruit a Spartoy and another turn starts, the refresh pool for recruiting Spartoys uploads uh, updates with one more to recruit. So you can get a full army of Spartoys and take full advantage of this even further. While the Corybantes one is only for a single unit because it's a single unit pool that does not refresh for that unit specifically. There's a unique building uh, based off of the, Mina the Minotaur, which gives favor of Zeus. Okay, great. It Whatever. It gives plus 18 gold per turn. Freaking crazy. Although you're going to pay a steep price in gold to build this here. You're going to have to wait at least more than 10 turns to make it back. But you get plus 10 to melee defense and plus 10 to melee attack for heroes faction wide. And you can build this in Nosos in the south and in Minoa at level 3. So you can get a total of plus 15 to melee defense and melee attack of all heroes from building this building in the two regions that you can find it a phenomenal building to get in the game so in these um islands here in the very middle you get a unique building here in ios which actually gives you more food produced and from buildings in this province more favor of artemis and more moral to worries of artemis i think this building is useless to build because you're not going to get these islands in the early game because they're very hard to defend you're going to get them mid to late game where food is going to be crazy already and how much you're going to be producing. So I would say that this is not that valuable because she can also maintain the favor of Artemis above 600, you know, with the strategy of maximizing favor. And Warriors of Artemis are not going to get engaged in combat in melee. You're going to deplete the enemy army before anything comes close to them. So this extra morale is not useful to give it to them. And you can instead use this in a... You can instead not build this building and build wood in this location which is a very valuable resource to build from early to late game next we have a unique building in mykonos here and this one is great oracle of apollo gives plus 15 percent to all resources in this province good to build early to late game no matter when you want to get these islands which are hard to defend this is a great building to get and i would highly recommend that you build it for your provinces here in Oropos, we still get the Sacred Hunting Grounds building. I built it here because I don't even sure exactly why I built it. 
But there's another place that where you can find this building as well of Artemis, which I just wouldn't recommend you to build it. Don't do as I do. Do as I say. And then if we work our way up here, there's still more buildings. Elashia here. This is a gold production building. And this is Oracle of Apollo. Also, I highly recommend that you build this here so you can get 15% to all resources in this province. A great building to build as well. In Aegeliania here, this pro this province to the left of where Odysseus starts, you can find a unique building called the Sacred Grove. Completely useless. Not worth it. Reason why I say that. Favor of Aphrodite, you can get it maxed out and keep it maxed out. But it's fine and dandy. You don't really need to build this. The extra happiness, you can manage happiness. You shouldn't be struggling with it in mid to late game. Don't build this. It costs a lot of gold. Build resource buildings instead in a wood region, which is extremely valuable for you to max out um, what you're getting out of it. Now, with the Mythos update, there was a silent change that wasn't mentioned in the patch notes. A new building was actually uh, added to the game in uh, this place here called Dion. An insane freaking building. Look at this. Look at this shit right here. You get plus 20 more favor gain from Hecatomb, which is great. You lower the cooldown time of Hecatombs by two turns. This is bonkers. And you increase how much food it costs to do Hecatombs, which you can manage in mid to late game. So you can just keep popping this left and right, up and down, just to keep maximizing your uh, favor with gods super easily and mo at more fast or more fast. What? Faster, which is great. This building was added and I absolutely love it. They did remove a building with this uh, Mythos update that they didn't talk about. There used to be these like um, Hephaestus based buildings that you would find across many regions that would give you favor of Hephaestus and lower bronze upkeep of all units faction wide. That building is no longer found in the regions in the game. So just take that into account in case you're wondering, did they remove a building or something? Because I can't really find it anywhere. Now, in Ophoshua here, you can find a unique building called Agorgonian Cave that gets more favor of Athena and plus 20 influence over the province. That's great. That's a phenomenal freaking amount of influence. But it's a two region province, not a four region province where the influence would kick into astronomical levels. The minor building is a gold building, so it'll get depleted. Also, not necessarily worth it to you for you to be getting this, given that this already costs 146 gold to build. So this is not valuable at all to get in this province. And then in the north here, uh, where is it? In this one, you can in this region of Flor Florega, you can also get it in a bronze region, the Gorgonian cave. This one sounds like something that you should probably do. But note that getting this is probably going to be late game for many factions. So by then your influence can really be managed and brought up to 60% very easily. And you can avoid wasting all that gold that you would do here and just build the envoy base building on the major settlement to get plus 12. And with that, you can just get this without costing gold and get influence up super easily and just build this bronze region to actually produce bronze. Um, what do you call it? Resources from this province. So I would say that's not necessarily worth it for you to actually build that at this location. In Latmos, which is directly west of where Sarpedon starts, you can find one of the best buildings in the game, additionally. Paved Sacred Way, plus 8% battle speed for all units faction-wide, and plus 10% campaign movement range for own armies faction-wide. That's it. End of story. This shit is bonkers. Build it. End of story. So in Kestros, however you say it, in the major settlement, you get access to Sacred Hunting Grounds. Now this one, I would say that you should build it because this sacred hunting grounds is on the major settlement, not on a wood minor settlement, which is a very good resource to try to manage as much as possible. So I would say that this building is worth building here to get the extra 15% multiplier to resources produced in the province for food. You can also stack it with the 15% from food storehouse here additionally to get plus 30% and get a good amount of overall extra food produced. And you're not necessarily replacing a wood based building to build this like you would all the way over here in uh ios i believe it was where it's in a wood settlement where you would build the sacred um wood whatever place in the province of address address trail address 
which is directly east of where Hector starts, you can actually find a unique building. What, why, why am I moving my mouse? In Pericaraxes, which is the sacred grove. This building, I wouldn't build it. Favor of Aphrodite, you can max out easily in other ways. And the happiness is not something that you need. And you can instead use this to produce stone, which is a very valuable resource as well from early to mid game. So forget about this. 